What's going on YouTube? So this is a rideshare driver and I want to talk to you a little bit about how I rate Uber passengers. So I'm in the app, as you can see here. Um, if I click right here, it takes me to kind of like my profile. You can see it's a general amount of time. It says two years. It's about two and a half years that I've been driving uh, with Uber. And it shows how many trips I've done with Uber. And it shows my rating. Now, if I click on this, it'll show me my last 500 ratings. So my last 500 ratings, I have an overall rating of 4.91. The vast majority of the passengers that rate me, rate me five stars. A few of them, just over a dozen, rated me four stars. Two of them rated me three stars. And six really special individuals rated me one star. So in my last 500 trips, I cannot recall a single trip that was like a real bad experience. So the ones that gave me one star are typically either people who feel that it's their uh, place in the world to bring balance and harmony to uh, the life of their Uber driver. Because if their Uber driver has a high rating, and maybe they don't have a high rating, maybe they have like a 4.62 or a 4.7 or a 4.81, and they see that I have a better rating than them, even though I have way more trips than them as a passenger, they might feel some kind of way about that and just decide, F this guy, I'm going to bring him down to earth a little bit by giving him a one star. So there are people who do that. I guarantee you all my one stars are those people. And you can see I have no recent writer feedback. That means no complaints, no you know problems. But that's the last 500 trips. So one of the things that I think is important for you as an Uber driver to know is that it's your responsibility to educate Uber passengers on their rating. Many passengers are well aware that they're being rated and they could tell you what their rating is. Um, many have no idea that they're being rated. And so maybe you're having a conversation. I'm from New York City, but I'm not a Giants or a Jets fan. I'm like a half-hearted Cowboys fan when it comes to the sport of football, right? Because I, I root for them, I cheer for them, you know, I'm kind of pulling for them to win. I wish they would, but at the same time, I'm not born and raised in Texas. Jerry Jones is crazy. I'm not really a fan of the coach. So... I don't really lose any sleep if the Dallas Cowboys lose, right? It's not going to impact or affect my life at all if they win or lose. So I might be in a conversation with some passengers. They might be visiting from Dallas. Once they find out I'm from New York, they might assume that I'm a Giants or a Jets fan and we get into talking about football and I tell them I'm into Dallas, etc. Or they might be from Houston and they're a Texans fan. And they don't like the fact that I even told them I'm a half-hearted Dallas Cowboys fan. And so um, just based off of that, people will make comments like, whoop, there goes one of your stars. Or they work for a particular restaurant. Let's say they work for Texas Roadhouse. And they ask me where to get the best steak in the city. And I tell them the best steak in the city is at restaurant ABC. And they might say, wrong answer. You didn't say Texas Roadhouse. So just based off of that, they might be like, there goes two stars. In cases like that, typically what I'll do is, 
I'll say, you know that I'm rating you as well, right? <laughs> yes, drivers get rated by passengers, but after every single trip, passengers get rated by the driver too. So if you're eliminating stars because I don't like your favorite football team, <laughs> just know that I had the same opportunity. And I'll just remind them in a friendly way, not in a real confrontational way, not in a, like, you better give me five stars way. Um, but you just need to educate passengers on the fact that they are being rated. They're being rated on every single trip. Because a couple things that you'll notice is, let's say you're picking up Tom. Tom has three people with him. Maybe Tom's three friends that are riding with him from the restaurant to the hotel or wherever they're going, from the skating rink back to Susan's house. Maybe they have no kind of idea what the terms of service of Uber are or what policy and procedures are or what Uber etiquette is, and they're just acting buck wild. That might be an instance where you want to say, hey, you might not want to do that because Tom's rating is on the line. Like, you're going to hurt Tom's rating if you act like this. And then Tom usually will come out and be like, yo, chill out. You know, he'll tell his friends, like, you know, behave yourself because I don't want my rating to get too low and I get kicked off of Uber because I use Uber on every single business trip. It would be a problem for me to be deactivated from the platform. So Susan and Philip, y'all need to chill out. Usually they will. Not every case, but these are just kind of like basic common examples. A lot of passengers don't know that they're being raided, don't know that the person that requested the ride is being raided, and may not understand how that could affect their friend who requested the ride, or how that affects them as the person that re requested the trip. So it's your job as an Uber driver to rate your passenger appropriately, but also to educate passengers on the fact that they are being rated. Now, just like you see the majority, vast majority of my passengers have rated me five stars, so too the vast majority of my passengers get a five-star rating from me. The vast majority of Uber passengers are not problem passengers. They can figure out how to use the app. They can figure out they need to respect you in, the, in your vehicle. And so most people that ride with me get five stars. The only time I'm giving them four stars or less is if they have no idea how to use the app and they're not open to learning or they're extremely disrespectful to me or to my vehicle. Once they violate uh, terms of service, then they're getting three stars or less for violating. But... In most cases, passengers are getting five stars. If they know how to set their pickup location and they're at their pickup, ready to roll, or at least ready to roll within that five-minute wait time, and they put in the right destination and they're respectful to me and to my vehicle during the trip, then they're getting five stars. They don't have to do anything special to get five stars. They just have to be a passenger that knows what Uber is all about and we have a decent ride and we get to where we're supposed to go without any problems, without any incidents, without any um, disrespect toward me or my vehicle. Once you start violating any of those terms of service or policy or etiquette or you're just rude or you have the superiority complex like because I'm a driver that I ain't nothing, I'm the scum of the earth, and you want to speak down to me like I'm a child or like uh, I'm a slave to you, then we're talking four stars or less. You disqualify yourself as a passenger from five stars at that point. Um, and I think most passengers get that in terms of their rating of drivers, but it's important for you as a driver to educate passengers, because a lot of times they have no idea. They don't know that they're being rated. They don't know how the rating affects them. Um, 
they may not have that information they didn't pay attention to the terms of service etc it's your job as a driver in a friendly in a kind in a generous way to educate your passengers and let them know hey you're going to be rated on this trip just like i am because a lot of times when people know that they're more likely to be reasonable and to be respectful um and to just let you do what it is that you're doing as a rideshare driver. So that's my input on how a rideshare driver rates Uber passengers.